Money Smart for Young People provides a comprehensive, developmentally appropriate program for young students to build an understanding of key financial concepts. There are many features that help make the Money Smart curriculum engaging, motivating, and easy to use. Each lesson includes learning objectives, essential questions, needed supplies, and the preparation required, as well as features and components to support an easy integration of Money Smart activities into your instructional day. Let's take a practical look at how to facilitate a lesson for pre-K, kindergarten, first, and second grade students. We'll demonstrate the activities found in Lesson 3, Weighing Needs and Wants. In this lesson, you'll dig into the difference between needs and wants with engaging storybooks and math activities. Students will think critically to differentiate between and prioritize needs and wants as they sort, craft mini-books, and collaborate on class games. A variety of independent and small group activities are provided to extend students' exploration of needs and wants throughout the school year. The overview page contains a snapshot of the entire lesson and identifies where to locate the answer key, key terms, and standards connections. Each lesson follows this common format, so let's take a look at it. The overall topic is listed along with subject connections. Some school districts have a standalone financial literacy course and others embed financial education into other curriculum areas. The time required for this lesson is 45 minutes, but time requirements will vary with classroom learning levels and the depth of topic exploration. The learning objectives and essential questions are listed to identify the concepts that will be covered. A supply and preparation list is also provided to assist in planning for the lesson. You will need a projector for the teacher slides and chart paper with markers, pencils, and crayons. We'll start this lesson with a 10-minute warm-up session that begins by reading the definition of a need and a want, and then looks at examples in each category. Use the provided slides to create a class chart of needs and wants. Or an option to using the slide would be to create a T-chart on poster or chart paper. As a class, title one side, things we need for our classroom, for example, pencils, paper, and desks, and title the other side, things we want for our classroom. Examples of the wants might be markers, stickers, and toys. As you create these two lists, share with students that a need is something we must have to successfully complete our school day, and a want is something that would be nice to have. Ask students to look around the room and see if they can spy one item that would fit into each category. Record the students' responses on the chart. Note that after discussing classroom needs and wants, it can be helpful to review strategies for making sure everyone has the supplies they need and that classroom materials are well cared for as part of an overall Money Smart lesson. The next step is the guided exploration. For this level, we suggest using the exploration of picture books to facilitate a deeper discussion about needs and wants. Begin by introducing a related story. Two possible selections include Lily Learns About Wants and Needs by Lisa Bullard for Pre-K through Grade 2 and If You Give a Mouse a Cookie by Laura Numeroff for Grades 1 and 2. Additional selections are provided in the course materials. After introducing the selected book, ask students to guess or predict what the main characters in the story may need and what they want. Can you tell me what you think the mouse needs? Can you tell me what he wants? Sometimes we may need to choose between what we need and what we want, or we might have to choose between two things we want. Discuss as a group what choices the characters in the story made. And as a class, reflect on three items the main character in the story wanted. The mouse wanted a straw. The mouse wanted a mirror. The mouse wanted to take a nap. Ask students. How would you choose if you were the mouse? Which one would be your first choice? Which would you choose second? And how about your third choice? Now, why did you choose those? And what made you put them in that order? After discussing the story, have students practice sorting needs by completing the needs and wants handout. 
For pre-K and kindergarten students, ask them to work as a group to match each item to needs or wants, and then have them color the activity sheet. For students in grades one and two, extend the activity sheet by asking them to number the three wants that are pictured in order of their own ranking. The next step in the lesson is prioritizing needs and wants. Start by asking students to imagine someone who is going shopping for school supplies and ask. Ellie is going shopping for school supplies. What items does she probably need to buy? What things does she probably want to buy, but most likely doesn't need for school? Discuss how a student might make choices on the shopping trip. Then introduce the My Needs and Wants mini book handout. Read the mini book pages aloud and show how to complete each page and assemble the book. For pre-K and kindergarten, you may want to assist children by cutting out the pages of their books beforehand and assembling their books for them. Then they might draw, paste magazine images, or use stickers of items they need and want instead of writing the words. The mini book can also be completed as a class at circle time by reading the pages, coloring needs and circling wants, or by creating a list of class wants and needs. Students' individual copies can then be sent home for families to create and talk about at home. Students in grades one and two may add an estimated cost for the items they choose as needs and wants. Wrap up the lesson with a class reflection which allows you to check the student's understanding of the lesson. At this point, you can ask students, what are needs and wants? How do you choose between things you need and want? Then invite them to share their responses. The Educator Guide presents a number of activities that can be used throughout the school year to extend this lesson through various subjects or centers, such as those for literacy, math, technology, social studies, and arts and dramatic play. These extended exploration activities can be completed as a class in small groups or during center time. Thank you again for your interest in Money Smart for Young People. To learn more about the FDIC's free resources for educators, visit www.fdic.gov forward slash teachers. <laughs>